gold, that key level you want to look at, 1795.60. Silver, 26.50 on the upside, 25.50 on the downside. We typically have about a thousand silver products uh, in inventory available for purchase. Uh, we're getting so cleaned out right now that we're actually, last I checked, down to about 80 items in stock, which is a, a number I've never seen before and never thought we would ever see. But, um, you know, you look at some of the base models, they're starting to recover. And I think that silver will break back out to the upside. Both the ranges will be broken back out to the upside. Gold, that key level you want to look at, 1795.60. If we break above there, we're going to recapture 1800. I think that it'll grab a lot of headlines. People start coming in. You'll have the speculators moving in the market. We should um, rally on some accelerating volume. Downside support, 1761. We don't want to really see that broken. If we do, we're going to re be retesting some newer levels. And then on silver, 2650 on the upside, 2550 on the downside. But um, you know, you look at some of the base models; they're starting to recover, and I think that silver will break back out to the upside. You know, Phil, uh, it's been interesting because we've talked about this before. Gold has been gold has been uh, you know at a crossroads, and there's been many forces tugging and pulling at the metal. Let's talk about the dollar first. Inverse correlation with the dollar, as we know, the dollar has been strong. Where do you see the dollar headed from here? Yeah, I'm not too bullish on the dollar. I think that the dollar had over. Uh, you know, you know, really overestimated its move on the past two weeks. We've been short the dollar index. Many of the clients have short dollar index. We've ridden this train. All these different themes, they've been going on since about last June to last November. There were two kind of pivots there where we've been playing the same trading um, direction and, and method on, on the different markets. So, you know, we believe that the dollar index will roll over. British pound got a bit oversold. Um, you are seeing a bit of you know, buying into the dollar, buying into bonds and other safe haven assets because of the fact that this Delta variant is capturing some headlines. There are some renewed lockdown restrictions. We're seeing oil prices, um, they're selling off a bit today. So there is some concern out there and that, you know, I think that that could be a new catalyst for, you know, additional Fed stimulus, them backpedaling on some of their hawkish tone and their hawkish narratives. I think that that gives that, um, you know, that, that, that movement that gold needs in order to start pushing back higher. You would think that the hawkish tone we've seen from the last meeting at the FOMC would bring the dollar higher. Is this long-term supporter for the dollar? You think that uh, potentially we might see two rate hikes next year? See, I don't think they could do it. I, I really don't. I think that they, what, what happened was, is that inflation blew away their expectations. They thought that the recovery in the labor market would happen first, and then the inflation would take off, and then they can you know, start doing interest rate hikes. They didn't realize that the supply chain issues and the lack of a recovery in the jobs market caused, caused these supply chain breakdown to cause all these inflation variables to shoot through the roof. Now they're like scrambling. They're like, Oh my God, I need to, we need to come out and say something really aggressive. We're going to do two interest rate hikes and this and that. The reality is, is that they still need the labor market to come back. They yeah. can't all of a sudden start raising rates aggressively if the labor market has recovered. And the labor market, I can tell you, is 12 to 14 months away to get into pre-pandemic levels. Mm -hmm. And the other variable that affects gold, of course, is inflation expectations perfectly ties back into the Fed policies. Where do you think the Fed... Uh, is going to take rates in relation to interest I inflation. I mean, if inflation runs harder than uh, their 2% target for a consistent period of time, they're going to have to raise rates, right? Yeah, but they, but they they ultimately, they won't be able to do it. So they'll only yeah. be able to do it one time because they're having a breakdown because the labor market's not recovering. So, you know, gold's perfect environment is when growth stalls, which that's what we're forecasting in the back half, and inflation goes up. That's that's that inflation narrative. We back tested gold all the way into the you know 70s, 80s, and all these different variables, and that is when it performs its best. And we're expecting to go into that. We've seen small periods of it, and we yeah. saw a massive stagflation period. That's when gold actually reached its peak. That was the bottom in a lot of commodities. Things started coming back. The vaccine rollout, things like that. I think gold could be really good. It's come to some good levels. And we, we built a strategy. I published it on Kiko a couple of times recently on how to play gold to the upside using the futures contracts. I've noticed, of course, uh, earlier in the year that when gold spiked up to its all-time highs, that uh, it followed a similar pattern to 2011 when it, back then it spiked up to nearly $2,000 in a 
fell back down all the way to $1,500 in flatline for a couple of years. And when we hit $1,700 uh, earlier this year, Phil, I was getting a little worried that the same thing might happen. Yeah, we hit a resistance level, uh, or support rather, and uh, now we're bounced back up. Do, do you think it's possible that we might retrace $1,500 like we did back in 2012? No, I don't think so at all because of the fact that the dynamics have changed where there's more, they're coming up with the Federal Reserve and other um, central banks are coming up with more creative strategies to apply more money in the markets. They, they, I mean, it's like one of the first times in history that I know of that, you know, the federal government literally just sent people checks, you know, all over and they didn't really verify what was going on. That money is going to be hard to, you know, expunge back out of the market. I know they've got reverse repo windows. They're providing all this liquidity and lendings out there. But um, I just think that, you know, they're not going to get the recovery. It's too, they, they want it too perfect. They want, well, we want inflation at this level and we want, you know, jobs at this level. Well, the jobs market is pretty, pretty broken. There's a lot of people that are not going back to work ever. There's a lot of pushback on it. You're seeing concessions being made for work at home and things like that. And I just feel like, you know, that's going to have a longer lasting effect than what they, they anticipate. And as a result of it, they're not going to get the recovery that they need. So they're going to end up only being being one interest rate hike, maybe doing some tapering, but the tapering won't be as aggressive as what they think. That's where people are concerned about the growth recovery in U.S. equities will most likely dive. And then we go into more of a, uh, you know, like I said, a stagflation period. That's where gold tends to perform its best. Yeah, uh, these macro forces that you talked about, monetary policy, and, and of course, the uh, stimulus checks that you mentioned, these should have been uh very supportive for the gold price over the last couple of months yet of course as you've seen it's been flat how would you summarize uh, the gold action in the last i would say four to six months or so why do you think gold has not yet broken out when maybe it should have already well because of the rising yield environment so you'll have when when yields are at zero and you know gold yields zero you tend to have people that shift into gold and they hold it because it has more of a chance of bounce back recovery. So they acted as a trading vehicle. Once they realized that yields were, were rising, they, people that are not interested in gold for any other reason except this safe haven, you know, it's got some store of value there. They're selling that position off. They're chasing treasuries and treasury yields going back into U.S. equities. So if you look at gold, it's down 6% year to date. Silver's down 1%. It totally reflects in the macro themes environment. And then once the macro theme changes, you'll see gold will retrace it and it goes into a seasonal rally towards the end of the year anyway. So I believe that, again, I think that equities will top. We were putting on some bearish um, put spreads on US equities. We paired back some of our positioning there. We paired back a lot of our uh, Bitcoin holdings. And we are going longer term with some of these bounce back plays like Again, gold, silver, and another market that we've been all over. I've written on Kitco was that was the oil market. You know, since November, that was a great recovery play. Now, I think there might be some concerns that OPEC is going to increase production, and the Delta variant could play a role with increased lockdowns. You can see, you know, kind of peak demand at the moment. So we are pairing back some of our oil positions as well. Okay, and finally, now you mentioned a seasonal rally towards the end of the year for gold. You're looking at two thousand dollars, correct? I really believe it could get going again. Um, you know, 2000 would definitely capture some headlines um, on the upside. I think that it has the right dynamics for it. You need the Fed to backpedal. Um, you need growth to kind of stall economic growth. We're already seeing how susceptible the market is. I mean, when we were doing this video, they started capturing news on the Delta variant. All of a sudden, travel leisure stocks sell off. You know, the Dow Jones sells off. Russell sells off. S&P is flat because of its tech holdings and they go back into tech. So it's very, it's very like easy to see what they're doing and why they're doing it, what narrative they're gripping on. And I believe that that narrative can play out into the end of the year. And that's where we can see gold futures continue to gather some speed. We need those big players like India to roll into some gold though. Um, and I think that that would get it going. So our viewers might be wondering, why end of the year, Phil? Why not the summertime like last year? <laughs> no, because the summer is, okay, you got two different things. The 10-year hit its, um, its all-time low. It was like last August. It, it hit it to like two times. It was a double bottom on the 10-year, like 0.4%. We don't have that treasury dynamic in there. So what happened then is different from now. This is going to be, we're going to make it through. We're going to have great earnings out of equities. And then once you get past this earnings cycle, 
those earning comps are going to disappoint. Economic data is going to disappoint. That's where the slowdown in growth occurs. And then the Fed backpedals. 